So this new stamp celebrates the life and contributions of the first American woman to soar into space and a woman who also soared into so many of our hearts here on our UC San Diego campus and all over the world. We are proud that Sally Ride called UC San Diego home for nearly two decades as professor of physics here at UC San Diego. Many people knew Sally as the woman who broke barriers as a woman who served as a role model for two millions of girls, somebody who dedicated her life to science, who dedicated her life to service and to education. She was an astronaut, she was a scientist, she was a writer, she was a teacher, and she was a mentor. She was just about everything you could ever imagine somebody to be. Here at UC San Diego, our campus community knew Sally as a passionate, an energetic and caring professor who shared her wisdom and her experience and who encouraged our students. She was dedicated to educating the next generation of innovators, change makers, and risk takers. Sally touched so many lives with her generous and giving nature. She is a hero to people around the world, especially adventurous girls who continue to look up to her today. And I cannot tell you how pleased we are to host uh, Sally Wright Science and carry on her legacy. And again, this was one more program that Tam could have taken anywhere, but when she had the opportunity, the first thing she thought of was UC San Diego. So thank you again, I really appreciate that. So this organization, Sally Wright Science, stokes imaginations and sparks young bright minds, encouraging them to pursue science and technology learning and careers. And this is a passion we share at UC San Diego, and we are proud to be the home of Sally Wright Science. We are also proud to be the home of RV, research vehicle, research vessel Sally Wright, which is a new state-of-the-art research vessel owned by the Navy, but operated our very own Scripps Institution of Oceanography. This vessel goes around the world trying to understand the oceans, the atmosphere, and how these interactions help us, uh, how these interactions map into climate and a whole bunch of other good things, sea life. Uh, so at UC San Diego, I can tell you that we are committed to, uh, we are committed to carrying carrying on Sally's legacy of pushing boundaries, challenging expectations, and taking risks. All so we can make our world a better place now and in the future. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you to the Postal Service, and thank you everybody. Now we'd like to present a short video tribute to honor the historic accomplishments of Sally Ride and the impact she continues to make on society. Sally was born at a time when outer space was science fiction and women's rights were practically non-existent. While she was playing tennis in college, she was studying science. The thing is, she never imagined being an astronaut. She saw an advertisement that NASA was soliciting women to be astronauts and she thought, I could do that. I watched as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon and I was nine years old. But the year I graduated from high school uh, was the year that Sally Ride, among the total of six women, were selected that year. 1977, NASA selected 35 new astronauts to fly the space shuttle. She was one, I was another. I was tremendously interested in and proud of Sally Ride and the five other women who were selected to be astronauts in 1978. And to me, Sally and the others were beacons that our generation of girls was coming of age. My first assignment was to do a story on the so-called new breed of astronauts. And the new breed meant that for the first time, NASA was taking women, people of color, non-military scientists, people who were going to go to do something on the shuttle, not necessarily fly it or land it. The seventh flight of the space shuttle was on board Challenger. There were five crew members. Bob Crippen was the commander, and then four of us who were in the new shuttle group. Uh, we call ourselves TFNG, 35 new guys. The American people loved the fact 
that a woman was finally going to fly in space. I was actually at Sally Ride's launch in 1983. I was on a family vacation when I was 12 years old, and we went to the Kennedy Space Center and watched the first American woman go into space. For me, that changed my dream of being an astronaut into something more of a goal, something that seemed much more achievable to me. So it was very critical, I think, in my life to inspire me, let me know that other women could do this job. Ultimately, I think Sally Ride thought of herself primarily as an educator. She spent more time as an educator, an author, the force behind Sally Ride Science than she did as an astronaut. She loved students. She loved working both formally in the classroom and being out in, with the students and in, in, uh, having coffee and just trying to get to know the people that she wanted to inspire. Sally Ride Science was Sally Ride's way of saying, I did this, so can you, and we need you. Not just that she was an astronaut, a physicist, and an influential icon as a woman. The forever stamp is very important because it really showcases that Sally was an inspiration for all women to go into the sciences. It's a tremendous honor for Sally Ride to be featured on a U.S. postal stamp. And seeing that megawatt grin on stamps all over this country, I think, is a great way to remember that. And now for the dedication of the stamp. I have the pleasure of introducing our dedicating official, Kristen Seaver. Kristen Seaver is Chief Information Officer and Executive Vice President for the United States Postal Service. As CIO, Ms. Seaver leads the Postal Service's efforts to drive innovation across enterprise analytics, business insights, mail intelligence, engineering systems, information security and infrastructure, and payment technology. Ms. Seaver has a baccalaureate in industrial engineering and a master's in business administration from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to welcome to the podium Kristen Seaver. Thank you, Becky, for that kind introduction. The date was June 18th, 1983. The place, Kennedy Space Center. The destination, space the final frontier. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> the world watched as five astronauts eagerly made their way to the launch pad of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Sally Ride was one of those astronauts. With each step towards the space shuttle, Sally was a step closer to making cosmic history. Over 250,000 people had lined the beaches and roads around Kennedy Space Center to watch Sally become the first American woman to blast off into space. Many were cheering her name. Many were wearing t-shirts emblazoned with Ride Sally Ride. A skilled parachute jumper, licensed pilot, and trained water survivalist, Sally's preparation was legendary. Her five years of NASA training, which included taking a lead role in testing in improving, improving the space shuttle's 50-foot robotic arm, had left no doubt that she was ready to break the highest glass ceiling. Through Sally Ride's work in the field of education, she encouraged young people to imagine things yet to be seen, heights yet to be reached, and possibilities yet to be achieved. She worked tirelessly to promote the idea that with hard work and study, anyone could excel at science and technology. Having flown among the stars and become one in the process, Sally Ride left us with one wish for humanity. It was her hope that we would come to understand how best to take care of our planet and how best to protect and preserve it for future generations. I think that this is a great message to leave you with today. The United States Postal Service hopes that the stamp that we are about to dedicate helps raise awareness of her life and the causes that were dear to her heart. To me, this stamp represents caring, caring about our planet, caring about humanity, and caring about equal access and equal opportunity for all. 
I would now ask that all of our participants please join me on stage honoring a pioneering astronaut, a brilliant physicist, and a dedicated educator who not only made history on June 18, 1983, but continues to inspire a nation. Now it's my pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Tam O'Shaughnessy. She is co-founder and executive director of Sally Ride Science at UC San Diego. We all also know her as Sally's wonderful life partner. Dr. O'Shaughnessy grew up in California and played professional tennis from 1971 to 1974. She earned baccalaureate and master's degrees in biology from Georgia State University and after receiving her PhD in school psychology from UC Riverside, she became a professor at San Diego State University. In 2001, Sally and Tam joined with three friends to found Sally Ride Science. Tam has written 14 acclaimed children's books, six of those with Sally. Please help me welcome to the stage, Dr. Tam O'Shaughnessy. Thanks so much, Becky. So <laughs> that is an amazing <laughs> stamp. And you know, I, I, I think it, uh, hopefully Sally's mother, Joyce, and her sister, Bear, and everybody else here who knew Sally, and it's a lot of you, I think, uh, uh, just sort of sees that it, it captures uh, Sally's warm smile and that uh, mischievous little twinkle in her eyes. It's really, it's drop dead gorgeous. So congratulations to the United States uh, Postal Service. Um, it turns out that Sally actually collected stamps uh, most of her life. Um, her family uh, took a trip to Europe uh, when Sally was nine and Bear was probably eight, seven, seven. And uh, Joyce, Sally's mother, was smart enough to realize they bought a car and they're, they're going to travel and learn about history and visit museums and so on and so forth. Uh, but Joyce was smart enough to realize that uh, two sisters in the back seat could cause a lot of trouble. So she better keep them busy. So the first thing was that they were going to keep journals and write about their adventures. Uh, but uh, the girls were having too much fun to write very much. And I actually have Sally's uh, journal from Europe, and you know, it says, it rained today. <laughs> <laughs> Went skiing. So Joyce decided that that wasn't quite good enough, and uh, she needed to keep them busier. So she uh, uh, told the girls that they were going to start stamp collections, and everywhere where the, they traveled in Europe, uh, Bear collected animal stamps, and Sally collected uh, Olympic stamps. And then after that, Sally just really got into it and continued to collect stamps uh, the rest of her life. And probably when she was, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure, 17, 18 or something, she started also collecting uh, space exploration stamps. And then after Sally became the first American to fly in space in 1983, uh, she was honored when countries such as Mali and uh, Guyana uh, issued stamps with her portrait on it. Um, but a United States postage stamp, uh, you know, she, she would be thrilled beyond uh, belief and just uh, very deep, deeply honored. Uh, as you've heard, but I'm going to say it again, uh, Sally did many things in her life. She was a physicist. She was an author. Obviously, she was a space pioneer. Uh, and she was a passionate advocate for uh, equal and excellent uh, education, including science and math education. And in all of those uh, areas of her life, uh, Sally was a leader. The U.S. Postal Service, uh, the stamp program, recognizes extraordinary and enduring contributions to American society, history, culture, or environment. And when I read that, it, it just dawned on me that Sally made contributions in all four of those areas, which is pretty remarkable. 
So I think it's, it's very fitting that Sally is on a stamp. I wish she was here to see it. She would just be, uh, you know, beyond happy. But it's, it's a wonderful thing, and it's, I think it's really important for all the girls and boys in our country and uh, around the world. It's just uh, you want uh, positive role models and people who lived with integrity and uh, did the things that they were truly interested in and passionate about, and we want all our kids, uh, girls and boys, to uh, follow that example. So thank you very much. So glad that you're all here. Thank you, Tam. I now have the honor of introducing Billie Jean King, although she really needs no introduction. Among accolades too, number, too numerous to list here, Ms. King was named one of the 100 most important Americans of the 20th century by Life magazine, and in 2009 was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor in recognition of her work in the social justice arena and her accomplishments in sports. I'm not done yet. <laughs> She's the founder of the Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative and the co-founder of World Team Tennis. A champion for social change and equality, Billie Jean created new inroads for all genders in sports and beyond during her legendary career, and she continues to make her mark today. Please join me in welcoming Billie Jean King to the podium. It's great to see you. Um, I wish Paul Sa uh, Salmon was here, who is the artist. I'd like, would someone please thank him? He did, he did a great job. As we know, today is the first day of uh, issue for the Sally Ride Forever stamp by the U.S. Postal Service. And it's a privilege to join you today um, as we recognize and celebrate our friend Sally Ride. Um, as everybody has been talking about what she was, is that <laughs> a physicist, an astronaut, an author, an athlete, don't forget the athlete, <laughs> and a leader. As we all know, Sally was the first American woman to fly in space, June 18, 1983. Relationships are everything. And Sally and I met through our favorite, at least I hope it was her favorite sport, tennis, um, in Southern California. And um, it's a sporting culture here in Southern California in those days, back in the 70s and before, that produced players with big backhands and pretty shaky forehands. <laughs> Sally loved volley. She loved it. Hitting the ball in the air with less time than ground strokes or any other stroke in tennis. Sally had the right requirements to have an excellent volley. It takes fast feet, quick reflexes, nimble mind, focus to evaluate quickly, quickly evaluate, cutting the angle and feeling the sensation of hitting the ball on the strings of her racket. Sally loved to learn, collaborate, and solve problems. She also preferred team sports over individual sports. And therefore, she preferred doubles over singles. Me too. <laughs> In the summer of 1972, Sally taught tennis at Tennis America, a camp where I was part owner. And I asked Sally, what are you studying at Stanford? Well, her face beaming, her body animated, her blue eyes shining uh, with enthusiasm and interest. She said, astrophysics. <laughs> this is 1972, OK? Put it in perspective here. I said, what? I said, is that anything like astronomy? 
And she says, well, yes, kind of. And she says, I love physics. Physics explain everything. I said, OK, whatever you say. <laughs> and it's so wonderful in 1977 when NASA finally, finally, as a feminist and someone who cares so much about everyone having equal opportunity, it was such a great moment when I heard that NASA was going to allow women for the first time in people of color. It's like, hallelujah. And it was just so great when I realized Sally was going to be a part of it. And one of the six women who were asked to join NASA. When Sally became the first American woman to fly in space, our nation and world celebrated her accomplishments. And we had a new exciting role model, a shero. As Sally explained, you can't be what you can't see. You can't be what you can't see. Sally Ride made science cool. She has given young children, especially girls of all cultures, to believe and have passion and purpose. In 2001, Sally had the idea to start a company with Dr. Tam O'Shaughnessy, her life and business partner, along with three friends, Karen Flammer, Terry McEntee, and Alan Lopez. Their goal was to bring science to life through science events and books. They wanted to show people, parents, teachers, that science is fascinating, creative, it's fun. Tam found a perfect home for SRS with the University of California, San Diego, to continue the dreams, inspiration, and legacy of Sally Ride. In closing, I'd like to read an excerpt from Bobby Dylan's Forever Young in honor of the Sally Ride Forever stamp. It's only a couple of lines, but it goes like this. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung. And may you stay forever young. We'll close our ceremony with remarks from Dr. Ellen Ochoa. Dr. Ochoa has been the director of NASA, NASA's Johnson Space Center since 2013, leading the human space flight enterprise for the nation. She became the first Hispanic woman to go to space when she served on a nine-day mission aboard the shuttle Discovery in 1993. She's flown in space four times, logging nearly 1,000 hours, leading onboard scientific activities, operating the robotic arm, and serving as flight engineer during the launch, rendezvous, and entry phases of the mission. Prior to her astronaut and management career, Dr. Ochoa was a research engineer and holds three patents for optical systems. She earned a PhD and master's in electrical engineering from Stanford and a BS in physics from San Diego State University. Please help me welcome to the podium, Dr. Ellen Ochoa. You know, while Sally had left NASA before I became an astronaut, I got to know her primarily through Sally Ride Science, where she asked me to speak at science festivals for middle school girls, uh, help judge the toy challenge that Sally Ride Science put on, and also help get the word out about the resources that are available to schools, like the Cool Careers in Science books. I admired her for her intellect that she applied as a scientist, her focus and passion for STEM education, and her astounding competence in so many areas, including her critical contributions to NASA and the nation as the only person who was a member of both the Challenger and Columbia Commissions. But let me go back to when Sally really changed the course of my life. When I was about halfway through my undergrad studies at San Diego State, and shortly after switching majors to physics, the first class of astronauts selected specifically for the space shuttle was announced. 
And because of the capabilities of the shuttle, NASA had really broadened its recruitment to include scientists, engineers, and doctors, not just military pilots. And that 1978 class, as we've heard, included the first women and minority astronauts. Well, that made a huge impression on me as a woman of Hispanic heritage, even though I didn't think at that time about it as a future career. Three years later, in 1981, the shuttle flew for the first time while I was in my first year of graduate work at Stanford. And of course, a couple years later, Sally flew in space. I remember thinking what an unbelievable opportunity it would be to do research in the unique environment of space where attributes such as microgravity, the existence of a near vacuum, and the ability to do remote sensing above the Earth's atmosphere allow scientists to carry out research that couldn't be done anywhere else, certainly couldn't be done on the surface of the Earth. The fact that Sally had also gone to Stanford and had a physics background like me helped me believe that maybe I wasn't completely crazy in trying to become an astronaut myself. And I decided to send in my application as soon as I finished my PhD. And a year or two after that, I also got to hear Sally speak, which only intensified my desire to join NASA. And it turns out my experience wasn't unique. A few years ago, we had a gathering of women astronauts at the time of Sally's memorial tree dedication at Johnson Space Center. And as we went around the table, just about every single woman in the astronaut office, current and former, had been personally affected by Sally. Those that were selected concurrently with her praised her for two things. First, including them in all the decisions that came with being the first woman astronaut. All the clothing, the personal hygiene equipment, anything that NASA hadn't dealt with before and really had no clue about. Um, she made sure to get a consensus opinion, not just provide her own. And then second, she did such a superb job during her mission that it wasn't really a question after that if a woman could do the job. It made it easier for the rest of the uh, women in her class to get assigned to flights and for all the women who were subsequently selected to the astronaut program. For those of us who came after her, we all either got to see her speak somewhere or actually meet her in person at some point in our journey to becoming an astronaut. As much as in demand as she was, she always made time to meet with young women who dreamed of becoming astronauts. So today, I am thrilled to be part of the Sally Ride postage stamp dedication, continuing her legacy of inspiring people around the country and indeed around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ellen, and thank you all once again for joining us this evening. This concludes our ceremony.